Hello Internet and welcome to part 6 of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. In this tutorial I am going to walk you through the code for the web page that you saw at the very end of part 4 of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. So if you haven't watched that tutorial go and watch it right now and it's probably better that you watch one the whole way through to 6 so that you are totally clued in on how to use jQuery and Ajax. Here is the starting off code for that web page. Here I'm just simply opening up the HTML page and calling for the jQuery library. Of course, make sure if you want to write this down, you can pause your screen or you can just go to newthinktank.com and copy all of the code that is in this tutorial there, totally for free. This code will attach all of my event handlers as soon as the page loads. I described window.onload in my previous jQuery Ajax tutorial if you want to see more on that there. I am using the function bind to attach an on-click event handler. If someone clicks on the element named one button in this example that I have right here, the function alert button click will be called. And here is the HTML code in the bulleted item in the lower left hand side of the screen that will trigger this event when that button is clicked. Here I show you how to attach more than one event handler at one time. Just follow one call to the bind function after another as you see here on the right side of your screen. I'm attaching a blur focus on mouse down, on mouse up, and a change event handler to the HTML text box named text box 1 and you can see the code that goes along with that text box in the third bolded item on the left side of your screen. Here I show you how to call a function, in this case resized window, when the browser window is resized. Again I attach a double click event handler to a button and a mouse over and mouse out handler to an image. This is how you call a function when the submit button is pressed. Also I show here how you can embed a function to directly handle an event handler and it's up to you which way you'd like to call your functions. Here I end the functions associated with the window.onload event handler call. Make sure you end this code block with not only a closing curly brace, but also a semicolon, because this is a common error people make. I also bind a click event to another button and a keyboard key press to the body of the web page. Special note here, make sure you assign an identification number to the body tag to be able to do this. And this is what the body tag would look like with the identification code attached to it. Here I define two functions that will handle alerting you that an event handler has been triggered. The function alert button click will open an alert pop-up when the button is clicked. The function on blur event will write new text into the paragraph element named second when the user leaves a text box. I reuse this last function over and over again for many of the event handlers to come. Because of that I'll list the code but won't describe it until something new comes up. You can see here I'm running pretty much identically the same code where I am posting text to either the paragraph named third or the paragraph named second. Just as you can bind an event to an HTML element, you can also unbind an event handler. In the function unbind logo, I do just that. Now the events assigned to that element will no longer be triggered. In the function check key pressed, I pass it the event object that I use to get the key code associated with the last key pressed. And I'm talking about the keyboard here. I then convert it into a character I can display on the web page with the function string dot from character code. And here you can see the rest of the HTML that goes into the page. Basically just a bunch of spans, breaks, and declarations inside of form elements for buttons as well as text box elements. And now, because I forgot about it in the previous tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to add mouse event handlers. If you add the following code to my previous event handler code, you will have a complete review on how to use event handlers. Change the code where I assign event handlers to the body to this. As you can see here, I just added an additional event handler being mouse move to the body element. And whenever a mouse movement is detected, I will call the function the mouse move. In the upper right hand corner of your screen, this text will bind the mouse move event handler to the whole web page. Now anytime the mouse move, the the mouse move function will be called. That function also needs to be added and looks like what you see here in the lower left hand side of your screen. This code will change the text in the paragraphs named 7th and 9th every time the mouse moves. Make sure you pass it the event attribute like I did here. 
the variable event.screenX and event.screenY contain the current value of the X and Y coordinates of the cursor. Then add these new spans and you are pretty much all done. The rest of the HTML, as you see on the right side of your screen, should be completely understandable to you. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go through all the animations that are possible using jQuery and Ajax. In the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you everything I know about animations. I'm going to show you how to hide the logo. I'm going to show you how to bring that logo back. I'm going to show you how to fade the logos. Just a little little. I'm going to bring it back to full opacity. I'm going to fade it just a little bit so you can still see it there. Toggle some text. Slide away text. Slide that text back. And mess around with the images. Catch you next time.